As we first reported last night, authorities have found two bodies frozen in a shed in Netherland. It's a case of weird science that has raised more questions than answers today. The bodies were being stored on dry ice by Triva Bavga. Many people know him as the head of the local polar bear club, a group that takes a dip in a frozen lake every year. Bavga was recently deported to Norway. Bavga is a firm believer in cryogenics, a process where people's bodies are frozen after death in hopes that technology can one day bring them back to life. So what was Bavga doing with the bodies? One was his grandfather, the other was a man from Chicago. News Force Alan Janay has been following the story. He's live on 4 from Netherland tonight. What's the latest, Alan? Well, Bill, the situation right now is that there is a police officer standing guard here outside the home of Odd Moorstool. Behind us, this is the shed where one of Odd's, where Odd's father lies, also with another man, both put there, as we said, by Trig V. Bavga earlier this year. Officials now say, though, that one way or another, this will not become a final resting place. Through the day, police protected two garden sheds built for tools and lawnmowers, now serving as cryogenic storage facilities. Inside, packed in dry ice, styrofoam, and plywood, the body of Trig V. Bobga's grandfather in a casket wrapped with chains. The body of Al Campbell of Chicago reportedly wrapped in plastic inside a sleeping bag. While state law does not prohibit the act, local officials wrestled with the concept all day, culminating in a trustees meeting. The situation that up there is up there right now is not a legal situation. The board of trustees told Bobka's mother, Odd Morstool, that she has to sign an agreement by tomorrow. In the agreement, she would promise to remove the bodies within 30 days, provide security for the site by tomorrow evening, and continue to provide dry ice to keep the bodies cold. It outraged her, enough to compare the town with the former Soviet Union. That's much worse than Russia, boss, and the Stalin. And you are Americans, you are Jeffersons. No! Orstel said she will fight it. If she chooses to fight this, that most certainly is her right. But I, and I think I'm speaking for the rest of the board, we, can, we cannot be as, I will, we will not be as lenient or as liberal on this issue if she, if, if she refuses to sign an agreement. The mayor says that may mean the town taking possession of the bodies 72 hours from tomorrow night. Odd Morstel compared that to killing. I will say they are going to kill my father and the other person if you don't move them before 30 days. And they have no right to kill other persons. If they are dead, they will kill them because we want to, to, them to survive. Well, the town of Netherlands says this is a violation of zoning laws and something has to happen. We did talk with Trivgi, uh, Trivgi Vodka, uh, Bavka to light tonight on the phone just briefly, and he says that under no circumstances will he move these bodies, although he hasn't talked yet, Bill, to his mother. All right, thanks, Alan Janay, live on for tonight from Netherlands. Those frozen bodies found in Netherlands are still causing headaches for town leaders. They want them out, and soon. The bodies are being stored on dry ice by Triva Bauga, one of his grandfather, one of the bodies. The other is a man from Chicago. Bauga hopes that through cryogenics that one day the bodies can be thawed out and brought back to life. The bodies are being stored in these sheds behind Bauga's home. His mother is now the property owner after he was deported to Norway. She has vowed to fight any effort to move the bodies. News 4 Boulder Valley Bureau reporter Phil LeBeau was at the meeting of town leaders tonight. Where does this all stand now, Phil? Well, Bill, city leaders still want the bodies removed, but I think tonight they realize that the quickest way to get this dispute resolved is to enter into negotiations with Bauga and his mother. So here is the latest on the battle over the frozen bodies. Tonight, the city leaders here in Nederland voted to enter into negotiations with Bauge and his mother. If the two sides cannot reach an agreement, the city will use a cease and desist order to remove the bodies. The board also voted to revoke Bauge's building permit. Nederland's mayor says it may take a while, but the bodies will eventually go. We want to work with, with these people. We're not trying to bully them um, or, or try to uh, uh, do anything that would dis, uh, discourage them practicing their beliefs or values. But we cannot continue with the situation that we have right now. You can probably tell that Mayor Brown toned down the rhetoric tonight, and that goes for the rest of the board as well. I think they realized that last night they may have come off a little bit too harsh against Trigve Balga's mother, and they hope that by softening the tone a little bit and entering into negotiations they can quickly resolve this dispute and get the bodies out of the shed
All right, thanks. Phil LeBeau live on Four tonight from Nederland. This was hardly Bauga's first brush with the law. News 4 has investigated his colorful past, and here's some of what we found. Bauga came to this country on a visa in 1985, and it didn't take him long to start attracting attention. In 1986, Bauga was arrested at Stapleton Airport after allegedly making hijack threats to a United Airlines clerk. That's when these mugshots were taken. The U.S. attorney never charged him, but immigration authorities did. They charged him with overstaying his visa and gave him his deportation papers. Bauga didn't exhaust his appeals until last week. In 1988, he was arrested for trespassing and resisting arrest at the home of then CU President Gordon Gee. He apparently wanted to show the late Mrs. Gee a report linking radiation exposure to cancer. And then, last week, immigration officers finally caught up with Bauga to deport him. He refused to bathe and had to be carried onto the plane. In order for Bauga to return to the United States, his deportation order would have to be waived. The agent we talked with today is not anxious to see that happen. Tonight, police in Arapahoe County say they may have a serial killer on.